We all begin life as a single cell, a fertilized egg. And that cell divides and forms itself exactly, so you have two cells, and then four, and then eight, and then 16, all exactly like themselves. At some point though, the cell has to start to differentiate, to move towards becoming blood, or muscle, or nerve. What signals a cell to do that? That's a very, very basic science question. That's the sort of question that Hal Weintraub was pursuing early during his career here at the Hutchinson Center. So Hal wanted to know what are the signals that take a cell and make it not just become exactly itself, but decide to become something else. Part of Hal's brilliance was making the leap between the fundamental basic science observations and applying that to developing new treatments for patients with cancer. He was in the perfect environment to do that as well because he could work with bone marrow transplantation doctors like Irv Bernstein to show how the notch signaling pathway that he discovered in a Petri dish could be used to expand patient cells prior to transplantation and shorten the time to recovery. We got very interested in the idea of bone marrow transplantation as Don Thomas uh, led the way. And we started doing transplants using umbilical cord blood. Now umbilical cord blood is a very rich source of hematopoietic stem cells. We can use cord blood in situations where we don't have matched siblings or matched unrelated donors. But after all, cord blood is actually fairly small, limited in the number of cells. A total cord has about um, as much as about a third of a can of coke. There was a problem here that we needed to solve. And that problem was how could I deliver more of these blood-forming stem cells to a patient who didn't have a donor. Irv uh, Bernstein was interested in that very question. And he was working with Hal Weintraub in some of the genes that Hal discovered caused cells to reproduce themselves or to differentiate. What Irv found was that you could lead these hematopoietic stem cells to reproduce themselves, to become absolute replicas of each other. Once we did that, Colleen took a look and said, you know, it's gonna be very complicated translating into the clinic, but that's what I wanna do. And she took off and did an amazing job. Now we have bearing the fruits of what she developed. We're a world-class leader in bone marrow transplant, but we needed to be doing more cord blood transplants, and I just went to it, and in the end, we started treating patients with these cells, and it was pretty miraculous. If anything that you develop ends up impacting someone's life, that is the coolest thing you could possibly do. And, and that to me is what it's about. So we were able to take a very basic question. How does a very early cell make a decision to form itself or become something else? a really fundamental basic science question and take it all the way from that initial observation to apply it to the use of cord blood transplantation to allow more patients to be saved with that procedure.